Hey guys, it's Elise. Happy Easter, and I picked a song that I would like to um, share with you. I want you guys to guess it at the end. Please don't shout it out when I'm playing. probably guessed it pretty easy it's called jesus loves me so i'll let you guys listen to my sister's sermon now hey guys happy easter guess what today's sermon is about easter yes today's sermon is about easter but it's more there's nothing more to easter than chocolate bunnies and all that kind of stuff and today we are going to learn about that. So without further ado, Easter by the one and only me. What is Easter? To fully understand what Easter is, we have to dig deeper into the weekend than Easter Sunday. You have to go back further. But before we start thinking about what Easter is, it is supposed to know what Easter is not. First of all, Easter has nothing to do with the Easter Bunny, hunt, egg scavenger hunts, and chocolate eggs. Those things have nothing to do with what Easter really is. There's so much more to Easter than those simple things. To simplify what I mean, Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead so that we may have eternal life with him. Doesn't that sound awesome? First, what is Palm Sunday? Matthew 2, 21, sorry, verse 1 through 11 says, As he approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. I untie them and bring them to me. If anything, if anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs them, and He will send them right away. This place to this took place to fulfill what was spoken to the prophet. Tell the daughter of Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt the full of a donkey. Guys, I have a challenge for you. This verse, does, this verse doesn't say which prophet that is, but my challenge to you is for you guys to find out which prophet has has this in it. See your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt the full of a donkey. Write this verse down, or just watch the video again, or something like that, and my and complete that challenge for me, guys. Please do. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the cloaks, cloak, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the ground, while others cut branches from trees, there were palm branches, and spread them on the road. The crowds went ahead of him, and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! Guys, my, I have another challenge for you guys. Search up what Hosanna means, or ask a parent what Hosanna means. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Note, Palm Sunday celebrates one of Christianity's holiest days. It begins what many churches call, call Holy Week. Palm Sunday is an important an opportunity to reflect upon the final week of Jesus' life. Jesus humbly entered Jerusalem to give us life on the cross, saving mankind from sin and death. If you guys don't understand what that means, think about it. If you knew that you were going to die at a store, say, would you go at Walmart, 
Say if you do, you're gonna die at Walmart. Were you guys gonna walk all the way to Walmart? Of course not. You're gonna go all the way to the end of the world, everywhere else but Walmart. No, nowhere near Walmart. But Jesus, he knew that he was gonna die in Jerusalem, but he still went to Jerusalem. How great is God's love for us? The Last Supper or the Lord's Supper. You guys have this, you guys might have this at church, it's called Communion. The Last Supper is described in three of the four New Testament Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Here are some of the life-changing highlights as recorded in the Gospel of Luke. First, Jesus predicts he will suffer soon after this meal and it will be his last meal prior to finishing his work on behalf of the kingdom of God. Luke 22, verse 15 through 16. Guys, can you imagine sitting with Jesus, sitting with Jesus, and all of a sudden Jesus tells you he's going to die soon? What would you think? Second, Jesus gave his followers symbols of remembrance for his body and his blood sacrificed on behalf of all mankind. You guys can also read this in the Bible in Luke 22. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. I gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Luke 22, verse 19. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, the, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is set, shed for you. Luke 22, verse 20. Third, Jesus provides a very important principle for living a Christian life. The greatest are those who serve others, not those who expect to be served. Luke 22, verse 26. Guys, have you ever been waiting in a long line and everybody is hungry? You're waiting for lunch. And this and this little kid might be behind you, but you're super hungry. Are you going to let that kid go in front of you? Hmm. The, next thing, that, the next time th that happens, think about it. Jesus says to serve others. Think about ways that you can serve others. Finally, Jesus provides hope to his followers, and I confer on you a kingdom, just as my Father conferred one on me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Luke 22, verse 29 through 30. Guys, wouldn't it be wonderful to sit at Jesus' dining table? Okay, I have some more notes. Throughout the Bible and throughout history, the truth of Christ's message has been established, that we can join Jesus in heaven by acknowledging his sacrifice and accepting him into our life. In addition, we can apply the lessons Jesus taught at the Last Supper to live a faithful life while here on earth by serving others. So guys, we can join Jesus, but what do we have to do? Hmm. Well, it also says here, by acknowledging his sacrifice. What sacrifice? Well, the bread is a symbol of the body of Jesus, never to be forgotten as it was given to us. He poured out his life for us. That's what the blood means. Jesus Christ has offered everybody the cup that represents the blood of Jesus, never to be forgotten as he gave his life for us through death and resurrection. The Last Supper reminds us of Christ's sacrifice and that by faith in him, we can dine with Jesus for all eternity. So we heard that Jesus was gonna give his body and pour his blood for us. So what is his sacrifice? Hmm. Stay tuned to find out. Good Friday. Good Friday, according to Christian belief, marks the day that Jesus, who's considered the Son of God, is, is the Son of God, or God manifested in human form, was crucified and died a human death. The day was full of suffering and pain. Can you guys imagine watching Jesus on the cross just dying there? What would you do? Would you try to stop it? Jesus carried his own cross from, from crucifixion with the crown of thorns on his head, which is to portray in many religions religious images of the figure. So why is such a dark day called good? Guys, I don't think this, this doesn't feel like a good day. He died and, and like in the most painful way in that time. How is that good? 
In the Christian faith, Jesus died on the cross as an ultimate act to forgive humanity of its sins and open the gates of heaven. This implies that without Jesus' self-sacrifice, an afterlife for the natural born sinners of the earth would not exist. So guys, if Jesus never died, we would never have eternal life. Guys, Jesus is so amazing to do this for us. It is explained in the Bible, Romans 6, verse 5, For if we have been united with him in a death like this, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Well, at one level, Good Friday represents a depressing moment in Christian history. It is also a day of remembrance and gratitude for the love of Jesus showed to his followers and his willingness to suffer an excruciating human death in order to save humanity from eternal suffering. That means it's good for Christians who have been blessed with eternal life because of Jesus' selflessness. Finally, guys, the moment we've all been waiting for, what is Easter Sunday? Okay, we've learned a lot about the days before Easter. Now it's time to talk about Easter itself. Jesus died on the cross for every one of us. If he had stayed dead, dead in the tomb, death would have won. Guys, you, you guys probably don't want death to win. You don't want to be dead forever. You don't want to be sleep, kind of sleeping forever. That's not what happened, thank goodness. Jesus had predicted before that in three days that he would rise again. That's exactly what happened. He died on Good Friday. He stayed, dead. he stayed dead on Saturday, which made some of his disciples lose hope that they would see their Savior again. Finally, he rose from the dead on Easter Sunday. What a wonderful God we have that he would die on the cross and rise again for us. Now, guys, we got some questions for you. What is the day that Jesus was crucified called? Guys, if you guys need some more time, you can pause the video because I'm going to tell you the answer in three, two, one. Good Friday. Fill in the blank according to what we learned today. Jesus rode a donkey into town on blank blank. By the way, guys, that's a date. So, guys, again, pause the video if you need some more time. But I'm going to tell you in three, two, one. Palm Sunday. What represents Jesus' blood? Pause the video if you need more time. Three, two, one. The wine cup. What represents Jesus' body? You guys, you know the you guys know the routine now. Three, two, one. The bread. Why did Jesus die on the cross? John 3, 16. Or if you guys have memorized that verse, um, you guys can just um, know it from memory. Um, guys, by the way, the, the whole verse is not the answer. You have to find the answer in the verse. Okay, pause the video if you need some time to, to look it up. Three, two, one. To, so that we may have eternal life. And guys, with no Bible at all, and just from learning about Easter today, did Jesus stay dead? Three, two, one, no! He rose again. And that is it. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this sermon. I hope you learned a lot about what Easter really is. Goodbye! Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us.